Hello and welcome to ISTV English News. I'm Tanya. Let's take a look at the top stories first. Thousands pay homage to June 18 martyrs at Kekru Pat. Manipur has no future with divisive politics, affirms UCM president. And private schools in Andhra Assembly constituency as good as dead. Hard to get admission in government schools. The news in detail. The 13th Great June Uprising and Unity Day was solemnly observed at the memorial site of 18 martyrs at Kekrupad to the northeastern edge of the historic Kangla in Imphal today. The observance was jointly organized by the United Committee Manipur UCM and the All Manipur United Clubs Organization Amuko. Thousands of people who came from different parts of the state and also other states such as Assam, Tripura and Nagaland paid homage to the martyrs who sacrificed their lives in the historic mass uprising of June 18, 2001 against the Bangkok Declaration signed between the government of India and the NSC and IM that extended the ceasefire agreement without territorial limits. On the occasion, President of the UCM Y Nabachandra said If divisive politics continues in the state, Manipur will have no future. In the early morning, Deputy Chief Minister Gai Kangam, Works Minister Dr. K. H. Ratan Kumar, Social Welfare Minister A. K. Mirabai, MLAs, MPs, many distinguished persons took part in offering floral tributes to the martyrs. Later, a public meeting was also held at Kekrupat, where President of UCM and Chairman of the Observance Committee, Y. Nabachandra, President of Amuko and Vice Chairman of the Observance Committee, Dr. Y. Mani Kuman, leaders of various communities and civil society organizations, social workers, eminent persons were the Presidium members. Navachandra said, in a state like Manipur where different communities live together, a community or an organization working for its own interest will lead nowhere. If everybody goes separate ways, we will have to commit the sin and crime of breaking up a state that has a history of more than 2,000 years. The 48-hour bund in the Naga inhabited areas called by the UNC has hampered the attendance of those many people who wanted to take part in today's observance. The UCM has no objection to anyone raising its own demands. If the demands are justified, let's all join hands and make the demand, he said. ตะกุนบะปังทุกสบะทรมอมนติอะคนนั้นสิปังทุกสริบะทรมสิดิสุนะดะกิอะดุงไอ 2001 ಪುನ್ನ ಸರುಗಾಮಿನ ಬಗಿ ತುಂಗದ ಅದುಗುನವ ಪಾಂಡವ ತೋದೋದು ಅಮೋನ ತೋಕ್ತನವ ಗಿ ದಮಕ್ತ ಐಕೋ ಮಸೇಲ್ ಗಿ ಮರಕ್ತ ಅಕೋಯ್ ಖನನೆ ನಮಿನಬ ಅಮದಿ ಐಕೋ ಮಸೇಲ್ ಗಿ ಮರಕ್ತ ಅಕೋಯ್ ಭಾಪ ತಾಮಿನ ರಕಂದ ಐಕೋಯ್ ಅಮೋನ ಸುಗುಮ ತೋದೋಜಿ ತೋಂದನಬ ಹೋನಮಿನಬನಿ ಅದುಗುನವ 2001 ಗಿ ಮಿಯಾನ ಲೈಗಿವ ಸೆಂಟಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ ಅದು ಅಕೋಯ್ ರಿ ಅಫಾರ್ಮ್ ತೋ ತೋರಕಂದ ಐಕೋಯ್ ಲಾಯೆ ಅದುಗುಮ ತೋದೋಗಸಿ ಮಸಿ ಪಾಂಡ ಹಂಡಲಕ್ತನಬ ಗಿ ದಮಕ್ ಅಮದಿ ಮಸಿ ಹೋನನಬ ಮರಿ ಲೇನಬ ಸಿಂಗಿ ಮಾಕೇದಗಿ ಜು ಹೋನರಕ್ತನಬಗಿ ದಮಕ್ತ ನಸಿ ಫಾವುಬದ ಕೋಯ್ ಖನದನ ದಮಕ್ ಲಾಕ್ವ ಸಿಂಗಿ ಮನುಗ ಅಮನಿ ದಿ ಅಥಾರಿಟಿ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಔಟ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ರಿವೈವ್ ದಿ ಗವರ್ನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಸಕ್ಸೆಸ್ ಹಾವೆವರ್ ಇನ್ ಅಂದ್ರೊ ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯುಯೆನ್ಸಿ ದಿ ಗವರ್ನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರೇಬಲಿ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ಸ್ creating a situation in the constituency that popularity of the private schools has waned to a great extent since about 10 years ago mla of andhra assembly constituency th sham kumar has been tirelessly making efforts to not only revive but also to improve the government schools in the constituency and has achieved great success today a situation has come about in the constituency that students are running from pillar to post to get admission in the government schools which is indeed hard to get earlier the moirang purel high school poirai kongjil high school andro high school machengpat high school etc located in the constituency 
had only about 20 to 30 students each. But today, some of these schools have more than 1,000 students. Except for Macheng Part High School, the other schools have been expanded with new infrastructure under the funds of Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan, SSA, and Rashtriya Madhyamik Shiksha Abhiyan, Ramsa, from the state government's side. However, as the number of students has increased so much, MLA Shyamkumar, with the help of the people, had constructed about 35 classrooms. The local MLA has added another 10 classrooms to the school for girls with boarding facility under the scheme of Kasturba Gandhi Balika School and 8 more classrooms at the school at Maching Part under SSA. Besides, as the number of teachers sent by the government is not sufficient, he, along with the help of the Andro Constituency Development Committee, has engaged another 50 teachers by spending about rupees 8 lakh per month. The teachers who have been engaged by the MLA and those teachers sent by the government are being transported to their respective schools by hiring a private taxi Tata Winger on daily basis, free of cost. MLA Shyamkumar is confident that the schools in Andhra constituency will produce most of the students of the top 10 position holders in class 10 examinations by 2017. Weaker students are also being given special coaching during night time in order to make them improve in their studies. <laughs> Parents of the students have expressed overwhelming satisfaction and gratefulness over the extraordinary role being taken by MLA Shyamkumar. If such special attention is paid to the government schools in the rest of the assembly constituencies in Manipur, just as MLA Shyamkumar has been doing, it will not be a difficult task to bring quality education in the state. Success will follow naturally too. And the government schools on which crores of rupees had been spent will be able to revive as well. What is more, all those organizations that have been shouting for quality education all these years surely need to support the selfless efforts of MLA Shyamkumar. Education Minister Moirang Thim Okendro had better taken notice of this significant achievement in Andhra constituency. Moving on to some national and international news now. The national capital experienced a warm and sultry morning today with humidity rising to over 70%. The minimum temperature was registered at 29.2 degrees Celsius, a notch above normal. Weatherman has predicted partly cloudy sky during the day and maximum temperature may settle around 41 degrees Celsius with high humidity persisting throughout. Thundery conditions could occur in some areas of the city during the later part of the day, said a Met official. Humidity was recorded as high as 74% at 8.30 a.m. Yesterday, maximum temperature of 43.3 degrees Celsius and minimum of 32 degrees Celsius were recorded in the city. In a reshuffle of his cabinet, Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav dismissed a minister and changed the portfolio of 13 key ministers, a state spokesman said. The statement came after the cabinet rejig late Tuesday night. Pavan Pandey, Minister of State for Entertainment Tax, who in the 2012 State Assembly elections defeated BJP veteran Lalu Singh in Ayodhya, was given marching orders. He was recently given a dressing down by Samajwadi Party Chief Mulayam Singh Yadav. Other prominent faces who fell from grace include Prisons Minister Rajendra Chaudhary, Basic Education Minister Ram Govind Chaudhary and Balram Yadav Panchayati Raj. 
Manoj Pandey, another minister who was given prominence as the Brahmin face of the party in the run-up to the Lok Sabha polls, has also been cut to size and divested of his important portfolios. The reshuffle comes after days of speculation that the SP leadership was miffed at the performance of these ministers who failed to get the party votes in the Lok Sabha polls, reducing the party's tally in Lok Sabha to five seats from the 80 in Uttar Pradesh. In a unique inter-caste marriage, a couple tied the knot according to Muslim tradition but inside a Sai temple in Etta. According to a report in a national daily, Azan and Arti wanted to tie the knot against the wishes of their family. They lived in the same locality and fell in love with each other and decided to get married. Facing opposition from their families, the two left their homes. However, their family members lodged a police complaint and set out to look for them. The couple reached Avagar's Sai temple, but they were tracked down. Their family members objected to their wedding at first, but later a compromise was reached between the two families. More than 90 former MPs and 22 former union ministers have sought more time to vacate their official bungalows in New Delhi. These leaders have requested the Union Urban Development Ministry to give them more time to vacate the government flats and bungalows in elite Lutians Delhi. June 26 is the last date to vacate these bungalows and flats. But these leaders are putting pressure on the central government by using their contacts. Most of them are citing ill health as the main reason. Over 315 newly elected MPs and some union ministers are still waiting for the official accommodation. Most of them are staying at guest houses run by their respective states. The central government has also booked 180 rooms for the newly elected MPs at various government-run star hotels. It is costing crores for the government. A 17-year-old youth from a village in Madhya Pradesh has entered the Limka Book of Records by solving complex mathematical sums correctly in a very short time. Rishabh Kaneria, who recently passed his 12th standard examination, told reporters that he set a record by solving 10 arithmetical sums which involved dividing a 10-digit number by a 5-digit number within a mere 2 minutes and 21.5 seconds in a test conducted by an official of Limka Book of Records at Vishagapatnam in June last year. He received a certificate from Limka Book of Records in this regard recently. Kaneria hails from Shujalpur village of Shajapur district. He said he aims to join the IIT. Meanwhile, IIT Kanpur has become India's first educational institution to have a supercomputer, its director Indarnil Manna said on Tuesday. The supercomputer was set up in the institute on June 3rd. It is the world's 130th supercomputer, fifth in India and the first one to be established in an educational institute. Professor Manna said in a press conference in Kanpur on the eve of the Institute's 46th Convocation Ceremony on Wednesday. The supercomputer will help the Institute in carrying out researches in the fields of aerodynamics, weather and biochemistry, said Professor Amlendra Chandra of the Chemistry Department, who is looking after the supercomputer. Professor Manna said, the institute is working on several projects like the cleaning of the Ganga River and creation of an unmanned mechanical bird. He said the unmanned bird will help in surveillance and aerial photography. Professor Manna said a team of the institute on Tuesday went to meet the central government regarding the Ganga River Basin Management Plan for the cleaning of the river. Reliance Industries today said it will invest rupees 1.8 lakh crore across businesses in the next three years and launch the much-awaited 4G broadband services in 2015 as it looks to break into top 50 companies of the world. RIL Chairman Mukesh Ambani, the world's richest energy billionaire, unveiled his vision to achieve in the next three years what the firm had done in 37 years of its listed history. Addressing the 40th annual general meeting of RIL, Ambani said rupees 1 lakh 80 thousand crore will be invested in margin enhancing petrochem units, expansion of energy business, opening more retail stores, and rollout of telecom business. RIL's telecom arm, Reliance Geo Infocom, which is the only company to have nationwide permits for 4G services, will start rolling out broadband services in the coming months. 
It will begin with field trials in August and commercial launch in 2015, he said. The search for Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 will move to a new area in the Indian Ocean, the Joint Agency Coordination, Coordination Centre, JACC, said today. The search team is responding to a series of electronic handshakes between the missing plane and a satellite operated by British company Imarsat, Sinhua reported citing the JACC. Satellite data suggests that the aircraft turned south across the Indian Ocean after flying near the Indonesian island of Sumatra. This information remains the best lead that investigators have in trying to find the plane, Angus Houston, chief of search operation, said. The JACC said in a statement that the Australian contracted survey vessel, Fugro Equator, has commenced operations in a defined search area. Chinese PLA Navy ship Zhu Kezin is also undertaking survey activities. Under the direction of the Australian Transport Safety Bureau, ATSB, the two vessels are conducting the bathymetric survey or mapping of the seafloor, which is crucial to carrying out the deep water search for MH370 that is scheduled to commence in August, Houston said. So far, the Zhu Kezin has surveyed 4,088 square kilometers of the ocean floor. It is anticipated that it will take at least three months to complete the bathymetric survey of the 60,000 square kilometer search zone. At least five people were killed in a U.S. drone strike launched early Wednesday in Pakistan's tribal region of North Waziristan, a media report said. The strike was carried out at about 4 a.m. when U.S. drones fired six missiles at a house and a vehicle in Miranshal town of North Waziristan a restive tribal area along Pakistan-Afghan border, Xinhua reported. The dead could not be immediately identified. Today's morning U.S. drone strike was the first of its kind since the armed forces of Pakistan launched a massive operation against the local and foreign militants hiding in North Waziristan. With the growing unrest in Iraq and reports of at least 40 Indian nationals having been abducted in the country, Indian envoy will head to Baghdad today to take stock of the situation. Even as abduction of Indians in Iraq's second largest city, Mosul, are doing the rounds of media, Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Syed Akbaruddin said the reports could not be confirmed as of now. Official sources say 46 Indians are currently stranded in Tikrit, where Iraqi security forces are fighting Sunni militants from the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Forty Indians are stranded in Iraq's second largest city of Mosul, which is currently under the control of rebels. Most of the stranded Indians are nurses from Kerala. Their families are praying for their safe return. The Kerala Nurses Association has appealed to the state and central governments to intervene and ensure emergency evacuation of the stranded nurses, especially in Tirkit and Mosul. Japan is set to offer its cutting-edge green technologies to India to combat climate change and help reduce emissions which would earn Japanese firms carbon credits, a report has said. Japan plans to sign an agreement on green technologies with India at next month's summit meeting in Tokyo between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Japanese counterpart Shinzo Abe. The deal will allow Japanese companies to earn carbon credits by helping the emerging Asian giant to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the Nikkei newspaper reported. The report said that under the joint crediting mechanism, Japanese companies using their state-of-the-art environmental technologies will be able to earn carbon credits in return for helping developing countries reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Carbon credits are the rights to emit carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Japan has so far signed agreements with 11 countries including Vietnam, Indonesia, Ethiopia and Kenya to launch the JCM. And now a look at the top stories once again. Thousands pay homage to June 18 martyrs at Kekru Park. Manipur has no future with divisive politics, affirms UCM president. And private schools in Andhra Assembly constituency as good as dead. Hard to get admission in government schools. Thanks for joining us and do keep watching ISTV News.